8 o'clock this morning, while we were praying over there, the sun was still coming up over the mountains. And I'm like, on the first day of this year, we're praying in the house of God as the sun is coming over the mountain. Isn't that awesome? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, there's a few things that the Lord told me to tell you guys today. We are in a, a time of, of economic turmoil. Uh, just a lot of crazy things are going on around the world, right? Uh, we're, there's inflation, there's recession, and there's some crazy, amen? But I'm not going to be stuck on crazy. But, because, now watch this. The Bible tells us that even when the plagues were hitting the children of Egypt, when the children of Israel were in Egypt, and, and, and God was allowing plagues to hit them, the children of Israel lived in a place called what? Goshen. And while the plagues were affecting Egypt over there, it was not affecting what? Goshen. And so even when God says, I'm going to start taking care of some things in 2023. Yeah. Come on, come on. I'm, 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 not, I'm not under that plague. I'm in Goshen. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? I am, I, I am, I am going to be at a place that in the boat... The storm was raging, all the circumstances, the atmosphere, and everything was chaos and death, but Jesus was asleep in the boat because Jesus knew he had a kingdom purpose. Come on. And so with all the chaos, I, I, I'm going to get political for seven seconds today, okay? But this is not my nature, but this, this omnibus bill, did I say that right? has aggravated me so bad and with my children coming to visit me I wasn't going to show any frustration so I haven't even looked at the news it made me so mad I'm not even look at it thank you I'm not going to do it I'm not waking up and when they walk upstairs I go good morning how are you doing this morning dad you okay oh I'll tell you if I could ring a neck I'd ring a neck this morning I'm not going to do that it's not going to happen to me. So I'm just telling you, come on, come on. Flagrant, oh, I'm not even going to go there. I could, Spencer, I could, whoo, whoo, whoo. I could be gone, but I'm not letting it happen to me, man. With all the crazy, with all the crazy, now, now here's the thing. Now, crazy, and this is the, there's two things the Lord told me to tell you, that we can be in Goshen during crazy. Okay. Amen. Amen. Number two, in recession, and if you own your own business, if, if you live by faith, you hear what I'm about to say. Because the Bible tells us that Isaac, the Bible says there was a famine in the land. There was a drought. Are you hearing me? There was a famine and a drought in the land. And Isaac said to God in Hebrew, he goes, I'm getting out of here. Now, I don't know how he said it in Hebrew, but it came out. <laughs> Like, we gone. <laughs> we in a drought and we out of here. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you understand what I just said? We are out of here. Okay. So, <laughs> so the Bible tells us that the Lord spoke to Isaac in the famine and in the drought. You know what the Lord said? He said, I want you to, it's, it's almost an entertaining chapter in Genesis. The Bible says the Lord said to Isaac, I want you to go the, to the land that I tell you. And Isaac had already determined that he was leaving. So Isaac said, okay, Lord, where do you want us to go? Where do you? And he goes, right where you're at. <laughs> right? There's famine. There's drought. The situation, the circumstances, the environment looks bleak. Are you hearing me today? The economy can look very bleak. And the Bible says that God said, I want you to stay right where you're at and I want you to sow. Now, guys, if you really think about that dynamic, in fact, go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 10. Proverbs 3, 5 through 10. Because here is the dynamic. How many of you know God, God wants first? Come on. God wants first. Everybody read this with me. Trust in the Lord with all your what? Lean not in your what? Now, now listen, God told Isaac, I want you to sow in a drought. I want you to sow in a famine. Let me just back over here. It's getting in my way. 
I want you to sow in a drought. I want you to sow in, the, in a famine. Lean not in your own under... Do you know there were people that were watching Isaac going, he's a nut. Nobody... We are in a... It hadn't rained for a few years and he is plowing his field. Right? He's crazy. Trust in the Lord. Lord, I'm ready to go. Where do you want me? Right here. So in a famine. And the Bible says that Isaac not only cultivated his ground, but he sowed seed. He sowed in a famine. How many of you know people were watching that and going, he's wasting that seed? Come on. He's throwing it away. He's throwing it away. He's, wa he's, squandering, he's squandering the seed. In a drought, in economic turmoil, with inflation, with CBDC and everything coming down the pike. Some of you looked at me and smiled. You know what I'm talking about. In all of this going on right now, the Bible said he sowed and the Bible said he received and reaped a 100-fold blessing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When they thought he was crazy, when he was leaning not in his own understanding, but he was trusting in the Lord. And here's the thing. God desires first. God, de God desires first. Uh, let, let's, do you know what first means? First means this. First means that when you get paid, you don't say to your spouse or you don't say to God, hey, God, if I have something left over, I'll give it to you, but I got to take care of my bills first. Did you hear what I just said? I'm going to trust, Lord, in you that you're going to, Lord, I'm putting my trust in you. Listen, I'm not going to get detailed in it, but there was a time, I'm not good at bookkeeping. I didn't tell this in the first service. I'm not a good bookkeeper. And when I had my own business, Stephen Banker, I didn't have a bookkeeper. And when I had my own business, the state of Texas comptroller froze my accounts and took all my money out of the bank. Pulled up to the bank one day and they go, you don't have any money. And they gave me a letter from the state comptroller. Long story. The point is, is then I couldn't afford my, I couldn't hardly pay my bills. So you know what I let go? You know what I quit paying? I quit paying my truck insurance. Truck because I had to work. Quit paying my truck insurance, and when I quit paying my truck insurance, my inspection sticker went out. You don't know what an inspection sticker is. Some of you know what an inspection sticker is. But when that inspection sticker goes out, you can see it on the windshield. And as I was driving down the road, a police officer went by me, and as he went by me, he, he was looking at me, and I knew, how many know that feeling? How many know that sinking feeling, man? It's on now. Anybody been there? Anybody ever been speeding, come over the hill? Have you ever been speeding? And it's not a spiritual moment when you come over the hill and go, oh, Christ, you know he's turning around. Anybody had that happen? Come on, if you're laughing, you've experienced it. Now, listen, I didn't have the money to pay those bills. I didn't have the money. I was doing everything to keep my, my, my electric bill and my water bill and my gas bill. And come on, I was doing everything and I was running low. I was running low. And, and, and listen, when he turned around, I, 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 I took an immediate left-hand turn. Whew, I pulled in. I did. I, I, I immediately, whew, I went into this parking. And I went in a neighborhood, man. And, and listen, I'm going to tell you what I did. I turned left and I turned right and I turned left again. I took another left. I took another. I put your left hand in and put your left hand out and do the hokey pokey. Get rid of pokey mokey and, and get out of the, get out. You, come on. I, mean, I was getting away. I was trying to get away from him. I wasn't speeding him. I was trying to get away from him. And he, every time I turned, I could see him turning. But he was, he was on a mission. And so I, was, I came down a street, and it said house for sale. And I, and I just, I, I'm not going to give the glory to God. I'm not going to do it. But I looked at my wife, and I pulled over. I go, get out of this truck right now. And I turned off that truck, and I ran to that front door, and I went. The lady opened the door. She goes, I go, we need to see your house. She goes, come in. I didn't have money to pay a, 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 the insurance. And I, and I go looking at this house, and the police officer's going like this. He got away this time, you dirty rat. <laughs> he kept driving. But she did have a nice house. Okay. And why am I saying that? I know what it is to have the devourer after me. Come on, come on. I know what it is to experience drought. I know what it is to experience lack. And even in that time and in that season of my life, I told my wife, 
We're going to put God first. We may not be able to pay 10% right now, but we'll give 3%. But he's going to be first. If I'll put him first, he'll dig me out of this pit. Are you hearing me? If I'll, di if I'll put him first, I'll get out of this hole. Now, it says, Proverbs 3, verses 5, and we're going to read through 10 because I want to show you something. This is amazing. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your, in all what? Your ways, what are you going to do? And, 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 and in 2023, what did he promise he would do for you? What did he promise he would do for you? If you put him first and you acknowledge him in everything you do, what's he going to do for you? He's going to direct your path. When you don't know which way to go, he's going to show you which way to go. At the, it may be the last moment, but he's going to do it. Amen? Now keep going. Watch this. Do not be wise in your own eyes. And I said this in the first verse. How can I be wise in my own eyes? I ran from the police and knocked on the door and acted like I was going to buy a house. Right? Don't be wise in your, own, in your own eyes. Amen? Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. Amen? It'll be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Now, I want to show you something here because this is amazing to me. This is amazing. Verse 9 is amazing. Everybody read this with me. Honor the Lord with your what? possessions with the what with the what you see that first with the first fruits of your increase now this is amazing to me now watch this I looked up this word honor there there are when you read the word honor in the Bible it can be different Hebrew words but this word honor is the he this this blew my mind when I looked this up the word honor here is the word kabod the word kabod means weighty, it means heavy. Now watch this. It means the Shekinah glory of God. You're telling me that if I will honor, you're telling me that if I will stop for a moment and in my physical, because see, I'm just a man. I cannot pour out the Shekinah glory. Come on, come on. I can't pour out that weightiness. I can't pour out that the presence of God. I can't pour that. But you're telling me that if I'll stop what I'm doing, you're here on what? The first. Are you catching this? You're, you came here to honor God. You came here to put God first. And when you stop what you're doing and say, God, I'm going to honor you. I cannot bring Shekinah glory. I cannot pour out glory. But, Lord, I'm going to honor you with my possessions with the what? First fruit of my increase. When that happens to me, then the Lord will begin to pour his glory back. Isn't that amazing? What little I give, the abundance. Look what verse 10 says. So what will happen in your life? What kind of blessing will occur when you begin to give God honor? with the? First? It's not just honor and worship. It's talking about possessions. It's talking about putting God first in everything you do. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and what's going to happen to your vats? They're going to overflow with new wine. Isn't that amazing? Now, there are people here that would say this. So you mean that God is so insecure that you would have to honor him first? Come on. You're telling me that God... Sometimes we overcomplicate things theologically. We can get so, <laughs> that we, we forget the, let me ask you a question. You ever been somewhere where you knew you were, you didn't belong? You ever been somewhere where you knew that everybody in the room didn't want you there? Have you ever walked into a room? As a preacher, I've walked, I've, preacher's here! Hide! I'm not making that up. You ever walked in a place that you knew you weren't invited? You ever sat down at a meal when you knew the person that was even hosting the meal didn't want you there? Come on. Some of you know what I'm talking about. That's exactly the way the Lord is. If you don't want him there, you think he wants to be there? But if you'll stop what you're doing, you'll say, I'm honoring you. I'm giving you a, I'm giving you a place at this time. How many of you know he wants to be there? Come on. Come on. He'll make over you. Amen? See, if you don't want him there, he, guess what? He doesn't want to be there. But when you begin to honor and you begin to invite and you begin to open and you begin to welcome, guess what, he, guess what his presence does? His presence starts coming in. 
His presence starts coming in in a whole incredible way because God wants first and giving God first honors Him. Amen? Now listen, first fruits, the Bible says in verse 9 that if you give, you honor the Lord with your possessions and if you give Him your first fruits, that they'll open up a blessing. First fruits sanctifies the rest of the fruit. Did you hear that? The first fruit sanctifies the rest of the fruit when you put God first. Look with me at Exodus chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Exodus 13, verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to who? How many know it's kind of important when the Lord speaks? And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Consecrate. Everybody say consecrate. Consecrate. Consecrate to me all the what? What's he want? All the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both man and beast, what does it say here? It's mine. The first is mine. Now, now this is interesting because this is what the Lord was saying here. He wasn't saying that if you had a baby calf or a cow that you killed that cow. That's what, not what he was saying. They did, there were times that they would offer living sacrifices to the Lord, right? Uh, but here, the way you did this is you would give uh, you would give an amount of money to the Levitical priesthood and, and it, it would consecrate that firstborn. Now, this is the crazy thing about this. The word here, consecrate, is the Hebrew word quadah. It means to set apart. Now, I love this. To set apart from the profane to the sacred. To set apart that which is profane and as you give it over to the Lord, the profane becomes holy. Watch this. I was born in sin. I was born a sinner. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there was a day that I consecrated myself to the Lord Jesus. Are you catching what I'm saying? There was a day that I asked the blood of the Lamb to be applied in my... Are you hearing me today? And God took that which was profane and made it holy. <laughs> Amen? Consecrate that first. Give that first. Take that which was profane and allow it to become holy. Set it apart. Take that which was broken. Take that which was desecrated and allow God to make it new. Amen? Take that which was in shambles. And say, God, I'm giving it over. Lord, it's been profane. Lord, it's been a mess. But I'm consecrating over to you. And you can take the mess and you can make it a miracle. Isn't that amazing? Because God says, honor me. And the first fruit sanctifies the rest of the fruit. Now look with me at the same chapter. This is amazing to me. Look with me at the same chapter, Exodus chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. just want to read this real quick. Set, different words set apart, okay? It means a release. But watch what it says. First, or pardon me, Exodus 13, verses 11 through 13. And it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you and your fathers and gives it to you, you shall set, everybody say set apart. Set apart. You shall set apart to the Lord all that open the womb. That is, every what? Firstborn. Say first. first. Every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have. The males shall be the Lord's. But every firstborn donkey, everybody say donkey. donkey. Burrow, mule. <laughs> you know what a burrow is? Donkey. You know what a mule is? Hey, boy, you guys are really getting smart. And <laughs> that's, that's, that's really good. And that was really good. Now, listen, I want, I want you to see what it says, because now it's saying to set apart, set apart the first. And here we see the word set apart is the Hebrew word pada, and it means to release. I'm giving it over to God. It's not mine. I'm giving it to the Lord. I'm releasing this. I'm setting it apart. Now watch this. This is amazing to me because God says the first is mine. The firstborn is mine. I'm wanting you to release that over to me. Amen. Seek first the kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things will be what? Added. I want you to release this over to me. I want you to take the profane, consecrate it. The word there, again, is set apart. I want you to take the profane and allow it to become sacred, allow it to become holy, okay, through the lamb. But now we see as, as the Hebraic custom was 
that as they are is as they are giving an amount to the Levitical priesthood for this releasing of the firstborn. God requires the first. As they're giving this to the Lord, he says, but now a donkey is different. Look what it says. But every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with what? What's it take to redeem a donkey? You can't give money for that. It takes the blood of the lamb. Look what it says. And if you will not redeem it, if you can't afford to redeem it, then you shall do what to that baby donkey? You'll break its neck. And all the firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. You know what's interesting about that? You know what's really interesting about that? A donkey is stubborn. Have you ever heard the term stubborn as a mule? In fact, have you ever used the term, you are as stubborn as a mule? Anybody ever heard that term before, okay? Is that just a southern term? You've heard that, Donna, in Livingston, Montana, you heard stubborn as a mule. Donkeys are representatives of stubbornness and rebellion. You follow me? Now look what the Lord says here. You shall, if you have a donkey... It needs to be redeemed by the Lamb. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 15, it says rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. What's the donkey a symbol of? Rebellion. What's the donkey a symbol of? Stubbornness. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And he's saying if you have a donkey... If a baby donkey is born into your fold, you need to allow the lamb to redeem it. And if you don't, you need to break its neck. How many people have allowed donkeys to raise up in your life and in your home and you haven't broken its neck yet? Come on. You've been allowing that donkey, that stubborn iniquity and that rebellion. It's, it's still using your house and your life as its stall. Come on, somebody may need to do some neck breaking around here on, on January. The, come on, I'm breaking that donkey's neck today. Come on. I'm allowing the lamb to redeem. I'm allowing the blood of Jesus to redeem. I'm allowing the blood of Jesus to come in and wash away. But I'm taking care of some donkeys that I've let come up in my life. And I'm not dealing with them no more. I'm letting Jesus deal with them. Amen? Amen. Because he wants firsts. Amen? See, the first belongs to God. Go to Joshua chapter 6, 19. Real quick. And I give you, you're going to have a Bible study. I'm going to give you a Bible study. Let's turn in. You got to hurry. Hmm? Joshua chapter 6, verse 19. Now, I want everybody to say this. I'm going to say it to you quick. Look with me. But the silver, they were the children of Israel. You got to get this. Spencer, you got to get this understanding, man. I did, I'm not picking on Spencer. I'm just telling okay. Sandra, you got to get this, okay? Now, you don't feel so. <laughs> Ruth, you got to get this. Brother Reed, good to see you. You got to get this. Now, you feel better? <laughs> now, guys, in the book of Joshua, you got to catch something, and this is a revelation that you got to get. God desires first. When you give God first, the blessings of God fall on your life. Just get it. Jericho was the first city. When they left the, when they left the bondage of Egypt, Jericho was the first city that they ever went into to destroy, to take, that God was going to give them this, the, strong, hold the strong walled city. There were other cities that God gave them. There were other groups that God gave them every in my Bible if you open my Bible well it's back here if you look in the book of Joshua every other city that they went into I highlighted in green now this is why everybody read this with me this was the first city they went into what's it say but all the silver and the gold and the vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to who the first city they shall come into the treasury of who the first city after that, if you, you ought to do, it's the new year. Make up your mind, you're going to start reading your Bible. Do a Bible study in the book of Joshua. Every other city they went into, God said to the children of Israel, all the silver, all the gold, all the possessions are yours. All, all, everything belongs to you. He only wanted the first. Are you catching what I'm saying here? 
He only wanted the first. Every other place, God said, you can have it. The blessings are yours. Give me the first. Where are you at today? You're in the house of the living God on what? Isn't that awesome? Now, the Lord told me to pray for every one of you. So we're going to have a prayer line. We're going to go around here. I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to anoint you with oil. Because the Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke. Amen? Now, there was a man in Israel that he thought, you know what? I know this is a good idea. But I just got to have that silver and I got to have that gold. It's got to be mine. And I'm not going to let anybody know that I did it. Now, uh, in a minute, I'm going to talk to Bailey and she's going to come up here. But I think it's amazing because you may think you're getting away with something that God doesn't see. But God sees it. How many have ever heard of a man by the name of Lou Engel? Yeah. You ever heard of Lou Engel? Lou Engel's a man of God. He's an intercessory, a man of prayer. And Lou Engel flew in back to his home state of California. And he was on a 40-day fast. And it was like day 27 or day 28 for him. And he pulled into his garage at 2 o'clock in the morning. And he walked out. first place he was in was the kitchen. He walked from the garage into the kitchen. He's on this 27-day fast of a 40-day fast or 28 days. And he said he looked at his refrigerator. And all of a sudden he had the crazy thought, just one bite of yogurt, just one spoonful of yogurt won't hurt anything. I haven't eaten anything for 27 days I'm just gonna take one bite and so he opened the refrigerator took a spoon of yogi put in his mouth closed said Lord you understand that nobody else knows but and and so Lou Engel goes back off and 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 he's preaching on the other he's on the east coast the following week and a, prof, a prophetess a, a woman that operates in the prophetic she said I have a word for you brother Lou and he goes amen sister and she goes the Lord would say he even sees when you eat yogurt oh <laughs> Okay, so, amen. He sees when even you take a spoonful of yogurt in your mouth. He goes, I repented before God in that house. Amen, you know, Lou Engel. So Achan thought he was getting away with it, but he took a wedge of gold. He took silver. He took a cloak. He took a little golden idol. He hid it in his tent. The children of Israel go to Ai, a simple place that the Lord's going to give them. And the Bible says 64 sons of God's children of Israel die in battle, and they flee before the men of Ai. And all of a sudden, Joshua says, there's sin in the camp. Now, because he took the first. Now, hear me. A minute ago, I told you, when you put God first, there's blessings, right? The Bible says that because Achan took the first, it says not only was he stoned to death, but it says his wife and his children were all stoned to death. Listen, your sin affects not just you, but your children. It affects them 20 years from now. Your sin can affect your grandchildren. Your sin can affect your posterity. So right now, what you want to do is you want to say, no more, no more. I reset right now. Is that the beauty of God? I'm resetting right now. It affected him. It affected his wife. It affected his children. Now look with me real quick at Malachi chapter 3. We're going to close Malachi chapter 3. We're going to look at Malachi chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 6 because this is the Lord. And I want you to hear this. This is... This is uh, this is Old Testament, but look what the Lord says. For I am the Lord, and I do not what? You know how many times I used that verse on my kids when they were growing up? Still got one growing up. But you know how many times I've used that? Well, Dad, we're in the new covenant. And I'm like, God says he's the Lord. He doesn't change. Right. Amen? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can take that as you, if you will. I am the Lord. I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. What does the Lord say in the Old Testament? What does he say right here? Return to me. What did he promise here? Isn't that amazing? Oh, you got it. It's a, today's a day, a new beginning. Today's a day of restart. Amen? It's a new day. It's a, re, it's a new chapter. It's a restart. Now look at this. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said... In what way shall we return? What, how are we going to return? Then look what the Lord says. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? What does he say here? Give honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruit of your what? Increase. There can be a blessing when you do it. There can be a curse if you don't. You are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithe to the storehouse. You see that? Bring it into the storehouse that there may be what? 
food in my house. And try me in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the what? Windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough. See, what God wants is your first. And the first thing he wants is you. Amen? And when you give him the first, the blessings of God start to fall upon you in your life. And everything around you, the blessings of God keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. But what he first wants is you. Amen? I've determined in my heart today that every curse from 2022 and from the past are gone. Amen? Amen? And I'm going to step into the blessings of the Lord because I'm giving God me today. And I'm putting him first in everything I do. Amen? I really believe that in the year 2023, and I don't understand this, but I know that, I, just follow me through this. I'm not going to get into new numbers or something, but I know that 23 and 7 is 30. Amen? I know that 7 is the perfect number of God, and we're, we're at 23. And I really feel like that, that, that this will be the year, I was praying this this year, this will be the year that many prodigals return home. I really sense in my spirit, I really, I really sense, I was praying today, and I really sense that in this year, prodigals are going to come home. Are you hearing me? You step into it, amen? You step into it. He says, will I not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough for you to receive it? Look what it says in verse 11. I will do what? Listen, when, I had, when, that, police, when that police drove by me and looked at me, man, I had a devourer on my back. Amen? I was in trouble financially. And I, got, I dug my way out of it through the power of God and the blessings of God. But how, you see that? Some of you, you need to kill a donkey. You need to break a donkey's neck. Some of you, the devourer has been on you. And today, today, the, it's changing today. Amen? You're going to get under the favor of the Lord and the blessings of the Lord today. Amen? I, I, I'm going to say this, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to pick on uh, you, Hope Center. Folk, okay, I'm telling you a, a, a godly, I'm going to tell every one of you a godly principle. you got to hear what I'm going to say. My dad taught me this. It was a, something my dad said. It's not a scripture in the Bible, but my dad taught me something, and it's really true. God can do more for you in five minutes than you could do in five years. So if you give a year to God in the Hope Center, he can, he can accelerate the rest. Some of you, the devil's telling you right now, you're giving a whole year, you're wasting, you're losing the year of your life. It's too much, you need to get out right now because it's a whole year. And God's saying, would you give me a year? Would you give me a year where I can rebuke the devourer? Would you give me a year when I can place the blessings on you and the favor? He can do more in five minutes. One phone call. Ooh, my goodness, my good. One deal, one situation can, can change it all. You just need the favor of God. Amen? Okay. That's, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake so that he will not destroy what? Not going to destroy the fruit of the ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Even nations will call you blessed for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord. Now, I told all my kids, I told all my kids, it's just something I say. I don't make it a... You know, it's not a, you don't have to do it. But I told all my kids, think about giving a year of, the, of your life to the Lord. And what I meant by that is you're under my roof. You're at home. You got to do what I tell you to do. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, let me tell you something. We in the land of the free, the home of the brave, we're a, we're a, we're, we're a republic. Amen? Thank God that America is a republic. But when you walk into my house and you're my kid, it's communism. <laughs> you're going to do what I say. Tyranny. What I see counts. You want to sleep outside in the cold? You're going to obey. <laughs> Amen. Ain't no democracy in this house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, let's get off that subject. Okay? Yeah. Putin, you're a Putin. Yes, I am. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, to <laughs> I told all my kids, I told all my kids, I said, pray about giving God a year of your life. Pray about, as an adult, you're giving God. Well, Tristan, in a way, did it. He, he goes to youth camp and he said, Dad, God's called me into the Marine Corps. What? I mean, I never heard that in my life, but... 
you got to ever love and be kidding me. And his best friend in, his best friend in boot camp was this young man named Holt. And, and, and the very first day of boot camp, the drill sergeant is screaming and cussing at him. And the drill sergeant gets to my son and says, what did you join the Marine Corps for? And he goes, because God told me to, drill sergeant. The next guy standing by, he goes, why did you join the Marine Corps? He goes, to get closer to God, drill sergeant. They became best friends, man. They were best friends. Amen. But Bailey, Bailey went to Bible college. She said, God, I'll give you a year of my adult life. I'm out of my home, my mom, dad's home. I'll give you a year of Bible college. So Bailey, come on up here. And um, we just want to, it, it, she never got to speak to us when she got back from Bulgaria. And she's home and I'm, I'm taking her. What are you looking for? I, I'm taking her to the airport in a couple of days, so she's just with us this weekend. But I wanted to see how she was doing at school, and so bless you, sweetie. It's good to see you. You look hey, great. Y'all. Okay. Um, uh, so it's funny that you brought up Lou Engel because um, it reminded me of the call. And this this whole past year, we've had Dr. Michael Brown, which I don't know. If Do you know who that know is? Who that is. So he was. Um, very key he was a key leader in the brownsville revival and so he's been speaking at our school for the past year and he was very involved with the call as well and i just i just was asking him at the end of the semester i was like hey so we see that the, like events like the send or gen z for jesus where they're trying to like redo i guess the call and i was just like how come we still talk about the call we still see fruits from the call and he said well the thing was it was its first of its kind and mm. so you're talking about first and so he brought up that that was silly anyway yeah. <laughs> you know the call was so crazy a girl a girl in the church walked up to me this was 25 years ago or so 22 23 years ago 23 years ago a girl at the church walked up to me and gave me a business card and on the business card was a black and white photo and it was two young people holding up a cardboard sign like on the you know we'll work for food and it said we'll fast for revival and it said the call september the first washington dc that's all i saw it was seven ten days away i had 35 teenagers on a bus and we drove 1300 miles to washington dc that's all i saw was that card that's all I, I said. We got to go. We got to we got to get there. We got to go. So Bailey was on my shoulders during the call, and uh, so what an amazing time! But it was the first, amen. What has the Lord been showing you this year? Um, the, I could have Norman Tammy up here right now, but hey, yeah. <laughs> um, the importance of the secret place. Um, so I've been walking out the journey of this, um, this dwelling and spending time with the Lord, and. Um, I actually remember when I first went to, moved down to Texas, I'd pray prayers like, God, make me like Moses, who, who talked to you face to face like a friend does. Make me like Jacob, who, like, who would wrestle with you and wouldn't let you go. Make me like Joshua, who wouldn't leave the, the temple. And so bringing that all back to the secret place and finding him in the secret place. And I've actually had a lot of... Um, a lot of other students, my friends, give me words this past semester of like, the Lord sees you in your secret place. He's like, you're not hiding from him. He sees you. And then like uh, other words, like this season that you're in of this secret is not insignificant. And so like, if you ever feel like there's a moment where you're just, you're seeking the face of the Lord and it just doesn't feel like anything's happening or, or it's just this time where it's just you and the Lord, it's not insignificant. It's very, very important. And so the importance of the secret place has been kind of going through my head. In fact, um, during this past semester, the Lord kept waking me up at 2.27 a.m. three times. And um, it, it got to the point where I went up to one of my teachers and I'm like, ha, didn't, had a rough night, got up at 2.27. And she's like, that's the watch hour time. You need to be praying. And so closer to the end of the semester, um, there was a prophet who came in just to the morning chapels, the worship service. And there, he's a friend of the Lindsay family. And uh, he said he had a word for the student body. And so he, gave, he got up and he gave this word. And uh, they were like, okay, we need to 
we need to kind of wrap this up. We got to get to classes and everything. And he's like, well, I have one more word that I need to give. And he said, the Lord says that there's someone in here that's been waking up at 227, 227 a.m. And he's like, if that's anyone in here, please, like, raise your hand. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> and so um, the thing that's silly is this man was going blind. And so he said he sees things, but it's like looking through a straw. And so he's like, can you come up? So I went, I went down to the front, and he started speaking over me. And he's like, there is significance in your secret place. And he spoke Daniel 2 over me where it's, where God revealed Nebuchadnezzar's dream to Daniel. He revealed secrets in this time of, like, searching the Lord. And then he said, and I see Matthew 6 over you where it's, like, when you fast in secret, when you pray in secret, I'll reward you openly. And he said, there's, don't take this time for granted in your secret place because at the appointed time, I'm going to release something for you. And so the, the significance of the secret place has definitely been my biggest takeaway from this past the past semester. So, again, we s the church saw a little video of you, a video of you from Bulgaria, but what was Bulgaria like? Oh, that was life-changing. Because um, uh, in my head, I always thought that mission trips were going to be like this you get out and you get dirty and you're sleeping on dirt and you're eat you're not eating and if you are it's like one meal a day and going going to bulgaria really like changed that because we had hotels we had three meals a day but we couldn't share the gospel because uh bulgaria is and was for a short time is under the Im islamic religion and so like you can go, but you can't actually say Jesus. You can't say God. And so it really, like, put a shift in my head of what missions or sharing the gospel could look like because um, you really had to be the light of the world. You couldn't, sh you couldn't say the gospel, but you, you, could, be the gospel. You, you could be the gospel. And so that was life-changing for me. And, in fact, actually... Um, I have the incredible opportunity to go back this coming uh, summer, so I'm going to do that. Um, but as a team leader, not just going on a on a trip. Wow. Yeah, as a team leader, and um, and it's not just Bulgaria; it's Bulgaria, Croatia, Greece, and Austria. And so, like w when we were t when we were sitting in these meetings, the word came over me uh, my last Sunday here that Les prayed over me of. He said, I see your worship going out like golden arrows to the nations. And the fact that I'll be stepping foot as a team leader leading worship in these four nations was just incredible to me. So. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So is Matt here? So Bailey's going to sing a song. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now. And. I tend to be hesitant. You guys, if you know me in any situation, I'm a very benevolent person. Uh, but when my kids are in need, I, I tend to say, well, we'll try to work it out. But the only thing stopping her from going to Bulgaria and Croatia and, and Romania and Greece is money, okay? <laughs> what? Did I say? Okay, sorry. Eastern Bloc nations. <laughs> I covered it, didn't I? Okay. And so we're going to take up an offering. And if the Lord lays on your heart to give something to help Bailey go to these countries and to be these golden arrows, just would you pray about it? And if the ushers would come up, we're going to take this up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do communion. We're going to pray over it. Can I pray a blessing over every one of you in here?
You don't want a surface relationship. You want more than this. Take me on a deep dive, deep dive into your heart. Show me every detail of all that you are, all that you This morning, the Lord told me to anoint every person in this church as a, and pray a prayer of blessing over them. So if you are willing to get in this line, you're telling God, God, I'll put you first. Amen? We're going to take communion. Amen? On this first Sunday of this year, 2023, the table of the Lord. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask everyone in the church, if you'll come down this left side of the church this is my right hand side but if you'll come down the left side we're going to serve communion to you as you take communion I'm going to anoint you with oil and then we're going to have others over here to pray over you and we're going to ask the gifts of the Holy Ghost to be released when they pray over you amen amen is that okay okay so if you're if you're praying come down here Norman Tammy I'd like you to come down but before you do would you lay hands on dude just gather around him, pray for his back right now in, in the name of Jesus. And when you're done praying with Duke, then you make your way down here, Norman Tanny. Now, those of you in the building, if you'll go around here, follow Mick. See Mick coming down the, see Mick.
Mick, I know you're coming to pray, Mick, but just show. Okay, come around. I got to prophesying over people in the first service, okay? I'm going to let these folk do the prophesying, amen? Because I I'll, I'll held up the line. I know you. there's things to do. Seb, you ready? Okay, so you're, we're ready. As you take communion, just take it right there and then come down. I'm going to anoint you with oil, and then we're going to pray over you. Les, yep, Donna, come on. Father, we love you, Jesus. Okay, you can see. All that you are, all that you are. 